some of the uh, the justice. So there's a, a what is it? The justice movement or some such. It's a progressive movement calling for various reforms in the country related to race and anti-racism. Now, I, I, I need you to know, anti-racism, John McWhorter is an academic, black academic who writes about these issues, and he is saying something I've been saying for a while. This sort of stuff is religion. What is religion? Religion is a belief in a higher power, a belief in a transcendent being. It's a belief in something greater than yourself that motivates you and compels you to act. That's what a religion is. Small religions tend to start out as cults where it's one person and a group of followers of that person. Uh, Religion means that that cult has expanded significantly and in, in so being it moves from the words of the cult leader to a a prescribed doctrine with dogmas and orthodoxy and beliefs. Everyone worships someone or something. There is no there are anti-theists, but there are no atheists. Everybody worships someone or something. Now I know there are people out there who say they they have no belief in God, but they do. Not, not, it's it's not the Christian God, it's not the Islamic God, it's not the Jewish God, it's not the, the Hindu gods, but everybody's got a belief in a God. Everyone is controlled by some motivating force in the universe. Everyone has a God. There are no atheists out there. You tend to be able to tell what you worship by what you spend your money on. Where do you pour your extra cash? If you don't have it, you, you only spend it on on things related to you, you might be worshiping yourself. You are your own God. That's where a lot of atheists wind up. But even then, they begin to get, they they want to improve their world. Now, the, the, the problem for secularists is that they have their religion, and it is a religion. It has its own tenets and orthodoxies. It has its own beliefs, liturgies, and practices. The problem for secularism, though, is that it does not have a healthy eschatology. Study the end times. For secularists, this is all they have. There is no hell. There is the void. And for secularists, they can get no relief. They they, they have to bring heaven to earth because there is no heaven after death. They have to make heaven here. And they split off in various ways in various denominations The environmentalists, it's all about the planet. Now you have the anti-racism denomination, and they too have to bring heaven to earth. And the problem here as well is is it always leads to secularism, atheism, it always leads to violence. We saw it with the communists. We saw it with the Nazis. We see it around the world because in their eschatology, there is no afterlife. There there is no heaven, so heaven must come to earth. And so the people who stand in the way have to be shoved aside, silenced, destroyed, killed. In this country, cancel culture derives from the secular desire to bring heaven to earth. Those who do not adhere to the secular religion, those heretics and apostates, they got to be destroyed. They got to be canceled. They've got to be silenced. They've got to be driven from the stage. Their ideas cannot be allowed to compete lest others be lured to their heresies of Christianity, conservatism, other priorities. They, they, they got to be ruined. They got to be silenced, stamped out. Anti-racism has become a denomination of the secular religion. Everything must be done to destroy racism. Now, Christians, Christianity has the only worldview that can stand the test of time in large part because it has a it has a view of sin that is innate to us. Now, you hear the the anti-racist there. They're developing their uh, original sin doctrine. 
you hear them say all the time, people are born into sin, that babies in the womb, they hear their parents and, and they learn the sin. And so they are sinners from birth and they get that. The, the problem is that the anti-racists believe there is no God. So the gods are the, the prevailing orthodoxies and, and orthodox pri- high priests of the anti-racism religion, which are the, the activists and the academics. And they will purge from you your sin. But see, here's the thing. There's no forgiveness and there's no grace. There's no redemption. An atheist or a a, a racist is always a racist, though their racism may be suppressed. And they may perform in certain ways to show they have overcome their racism, but at heart, because of their birth, they will always be a part of them. Just as a Christian can repent of sin, but is still a sinner, a racist can repent of racism and they are still a racist. But they're on the path of sanctification towards justification and salvation. And that salvation comes when all the racists are shut up and silenced and all the racists are not real racists. They're people not down with the anti-racist agenda. Now, the anti-racist agenda actually hurts the poor and minority communities because anti-racism is largely driven by rich white people who feel guilty about themselves and don't have the language or understanding of of Judeo-Christian religion to understand the innateness of their own sin. They're in search for a God and they found it in the mirror. And their God calls them to action to absolve them of their guilt. So they must act. And in their actions, they can harm poor people. They can harm black people. They can avoid the advancement. So look at New York City where they're having to get rid of the gifted program because too many Asian kids are in it. Not enough black and Hispanic kids. So every other child's life must be ruined. Black children must be forced into public schools around the country. They can't be given the opportunities to private schools where they might learn a competing religion like Christianity. They got to stay and be indoctrinated in the public schools. And their police must be defunded and taken from them because they may not realize it. They may say they want the police, but they are so indoctrinated into white supremacy, they don't realize the police are bad for them. These are the prevailing orthodoxies of the secular anti-racist religion. I've told you all this before. Some of you have thought I was making it up, and I'm actually being very serious here. I know multiple situations. I have talked to people involved in multiple situations where after the George Floyd incident, after the George Floyd murder, let's be honest with what it was, it was a murder. When Americans kind of had the scales fall off their eyes and realized we, we, we do have problems in this country related to the police and, and race, it's not it's not all police officers are bad. In fact, the majority of them are overwhelmingly good, but there are issues and there are disparities based on race in some cases, not all cases. Sometimes they're overstated, but we, we got a ways to go on racial reconciliation in this country. That That's in, uh, not a woke statement. That's a reality. But I know of multiple groups. I have heard these stories from the women involved. Black women involved who listened to my program in Atlanta. They they went to these racial reconciliation groups, meeting with the white women. Overwhelmingly, the white women were upper income white women who wanted to be involved. And on multiple occasions, these black women who have talked to me have told me that when they just wanted to be treated as an equal, they they, they didn't they didn't want to ask for extra. They just, in their words, wanted one of the white people want white people to treat them like they treat other white people, to not be suspicious of them and their kids when they walk through a white neighborhood, to not be suspicious when it's a black person in a car, things like that. That's what they said they wanted. They don't want extra. They just they just want equality. And the white women began to lecture them that they didn't even realize that they should want more because they've been so indoctrinated and oppressed by white supremacy that they didn't realize they should be demanding even more than that. They're like, we, we don't want more than that. We just want equality. And it was profound. Well, one of the, the women who was involved told me that she was profoundly dismayed as a black woman to be lectured by white women on what the black woman needs as if the black woman did not know because she could not see through the white supremacy around her. 
she sees very clearly, but it was what the, the, she dropped out of the group she was in because she said what it turned out to be was a bunch of rich white women who have no association with her, will never have association with her or her neighborhood, who wanted to feel good about themselves, to absolve themselves of their sins. And she's right. Anti-racism is a religion. And one of the one of the big issues within the anti-racist religion is bail. Now, there have been a series of efforts by the anti-racist progressives to get rid of cash bail. To essentially say, I, I can't, I'm going to let you out of jail without posting bail. You can't post bail, therefore you have to stay in jail. And the anti-racists say that's discriminatory because poor black men can't afford the bail, so they stay in jail. So we got to get rid of cash bail. Study after 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 study has shown getting rid of cash bail has directly contributed to the increase in crime in urban areas around this country. Turns out a lot of criminals happen to be poor, sometimes black. They can't afford bail. They get locked up. They can't be let out. You let them out because there's no bail requirement anymore. You just got to let them out. They go back to crime. And the crime is going up in large part because of that. So the Biden administration has released their gender equity and equality plan. One of their proposals for gender equity is to get rid of cash bail. That cash bail that when it was done away with in places like New York City saw a direct increase in crime related to it, they want to get rid of it nationwide. They want to ban cash bail. Y'all, this is one of those situations that is going to blow up in the Democrats' face. But again, you got to keep in mind, this is religion for a lot of them. This is the advance of religion for them. And advancing that religion, they believe they've got to advance this. And for the Biden administration, the Biden administration, they don't care. What the Biden administration cares about is, is they got to, you, you got the Christians are going to show up against Biden. So he's got to get the anti-religious, anti-racist religion to show up for him. This is all about firing up the progressives. It's all about firing up progressive activists to come out and vote for Joe Biden next year. The problem is it's going to backfire. It scratches the itch of the anti-racist religious zealots, but it makes crime worse. The people who want to defund the police now want to also let the criminals out of prison without consequence, and that's going to hurt them. It's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt me. It's going to hurt our small businesses as crime goes up, as theft goes up. And they don't care because, again, they're dealing with religious zealots on the left.